Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. And tonight, our second guest is Donate Life Northwest, a very important organization that's doing some amazing things here in our area. With us tonight, the Director of Programs is Judith Trujillo. Thanks for being here, Judith. Thank you. You're and welcome. Tracy Hoyle, who is a heart and kidney recipient, mm -hmm. somebody who's directly benefited from this organization. Absolutely. Thanks for being here, Tracy. Um, Judith, maybe you can start out by giving us a little information about, um, about Donate Life Northwest. What, what you're all about, what your mission is, that sure, kind of thing. Sure. Um, Donate Life Northwest is a nonprofit agency. We're 37 years old, mm -hmm. and we were conceived um, by the organ, eye, and tissue recovery agencies and the transplant programs to do public education. Okay. So they could do their work, and we do the public education. Perfect. And that's, that was the point. So our mission is to save and enhance lives through the promotion of organ, eye, and tissue donation. Sounds like a valuable uh, mission to me. Yeah, you had a graph that you mm -hmm. brought. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we can bring that graph up and you can explain exactly what that means to okay. our viewer. So I think she'll bring that up here in a minute. Okay, okay what are we looking at here? Okay, um, this is the national donor gap. The green line is the waiting list. It's a national organ transplant waiting list. You can see it's growing every year. Uh, every year. The blue the blue line are the deceased donors, and then the red line are living donors, like living for oh. living kidney, for instance. And the, the gap is growing for several reasons. One is the need grows because, uh, largely because of kidneys. About 80% of the list is waiting for kidneys. And there's you know, ob obesity, for instance, mm -hmm. contributes to type 2 diabetes and undetected high blood pressure which then causes renal failure and need for transplant. Wow. So the list just continues to grow. And the, the um, deceased and the living donors stay pretty constant, yeah, um, partly because there's an aging population. Uh -huh. We have more um, complications when at death that might prevent donation. Mm. And then there's all, there are good things like safety laws, you know, helmets and speed, right, right, speed limits and that right. kind of thing. Wow. So the the um, the donations that that people make they can be it can be either somebody who has has passed away mm -hmm. either from natural causes or mm -hmm. an accident or that kind of thing or it can be somebody like um, a sibling who donates a kidney or it can be somebody totally unrelated mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. do you also do work with the bone marrow that kind of thing or no, is it just organs no in your we work with organs eyes and tissues okay. Um, and then the bone marrow and, and, for instance, blood is considered a living tissue as well for donation. Right, right. Those are separate. Right, and we've worked yeah. and we've um, had uh, the uh, bone marrow yeah. people on so, here before. So tell me, how hard is it to become a donor? I mean, say if I, yeah. you know, obviously, <laughs> I would like to live a long time, oh, but like that. were something <laughs> to happen to me and I yeah. were to die suddenly and my organs were viable and could be used for donation, what would I have had to do to make sure that that happened? Right. Um, one of the main things that we do is we manage Oregon's donor registry, and that is for deceased donation. We have 2.2 million Oregonians registered which is like 70 percent of our driver population over age 18 oh, so that's an, that's, an that's amazing a, yeah, number that is. Um, but the only about one in 420 or 30 people or so actually can be an organ donor um, you register do not self-eliminate because the decision about donation is not made until someone dies right so people say oh I'm too old I'm too sick I'm this or that no not yeah. to register um, so but in order to be an internal organ donor the criteria are very narrow mm. um, first of all you have to die in the hospital oh. for an organ eye oh, and tissue is different eye and tissue hmm. is different because the recovery period is longer and uh -huh. to be an organ donor you have to have a beating heart and even have, though you are, even if you passed right away, away okay. your heart has to be kept beating right. okay. until recovery can be done so you have to die in a hospital you have to be on a ventilator or a mechanical support mm -hmm. and most organ donors die from um, a brain injury a traumatic brain mm. injury and that's a very small percent of the population. Sure, like sure. you said, one in about 430 people or so. We had 36,000 deaths approximately in Oregon last year. We had 86 
deceased organ donors. Wow, really? Very small number. Oh, that is. So the need is huge. It is. Uh, we, the registry is important. Yeah. Tracy, tell me, what, tell me about your situation. Now, what, why, first of all, <coughs> do you need to have organs donated? Well, in 2000, um, I had my first heart transplant, and they considered it what they called idiopathic cardiomyopathy, which is they don't exactly know what happened. Oh, they really? think a virus settled on the heart mm -hmm. muscle and just, can, just slowly uh, destroyed the heart muscle. Wow. And mm. so at that point, you know, you can't walk very far. You just, you're just not feeling good. Okay. Um, and, and you I was, very old. I was 29 years old at that, okay. age, at wow. that time. And um, my mother had actually passed away 15 years before and was an organ donor. So I'd been touched by organ donation right. well before mm. I needed one for myself. Right. Um, so I had my first transplant in 2000. It's kind of almost like it just kind of came around what your mom Full did. Full circle, yeah, kind yeah. of, yeah. you know, and it was great. I uh, had the transplant, recovered very well. Six weeks after transplant, I found out I was pregnant. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this is one thing they said, wow. don't do. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, Oops. my husband and I had been married for, at that point, uh, six years mm -hmm. and we just knew we weren't gonna have kids and we were okay with that and we had our dogs and we were good you know if you don't have kids you got dogs yeah <laughs> so <laughs> something to share with that um, one so we found out yeah. we were pregnant and I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to continue with the pregnancy sure. um, but the doctors left it up to us and uh, he was delivered one week shy of 10 months from my transplant date so he was born on and February 5th of 2000, a little boy, and very healthy. He's 12 years old. Oh, he just wonderful. turned 12 last yeah, week. Yeah, just had a birthday. Just had a birthday. Yeah. Very active, very normal, very healthy. Um, oh, what wonderful news. Yeah, we ended up having his heart checked out because he is so active in sports. Mm -hmm. He plays everything that's out there, and he's fine. Okay. So it's not a hereditary issue. Right, it's not a genetic thing. No. Um, but this last... I would say May, I started getting pretty sick again. And uh, I was during baseball season, and I was telling Judith earlier, um, I would walk from my car to my son's baseball games, and it wasn't very far. And I'd have to stop three or four times because uh, yeah. I had to catch my breath. And, and uh, it's just something that you get used to doing. It right. becomes your norm. But when I went to the doctor in May, she asked me if I was willing to do a second transplant well of course I'm willing yeah. if if God willing yeah right, <laughs> you know that right. I, I can get a second transplant and she said well you're not only gonna need a heart you're gonna need a kidney too why why, why is the that? kidneys are filter hmm. the medications oh, okay. okay and the anti-rejection medications are very tough on the kidneys and um, it's not unusual that to have, to transplant have patients mm -hmm. need to have a kidney. It is unusual to have them at the same time. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> um, I had a couple episodes where I'd go in the hospital, come out. I ended up on the transplant list again um, for heart and kidney in May, um, but ended up in September <coughs> going into the hospital because um, I had had an episode at home where I passed out. Oh boy. And. Um, they couldn't, I wasn't responsive. And I got to the hospital and the next day I ended up with a pacemaker put in. Really? And <laughs> two days later I was put on the 1A status, which is in grave need. Top, top, yeah, top yeah. of the list. Mm -hmm. um, and I waited in, in the hospital for 43 days uh, to get my wonderful news that I would be receiving transplant. And I got my second transplant, second heart and kidney. <coughs> all on October 21st <coughs> of this last year. So you got both. So I'm just three and a half months out from a dual and how transplant. Are you feeling? I feel awesome. <laughs> you look great. I, <laughs> you look great. I'm back at the know, gym. Huh? I'm I'm walking on the treadmill two, two and a half miles three to five times wow. a week, lifting minimal weights until I get the six month <coughs> clearance. Me. Good for you. Um, but I feel amazing. So how hard is it to get a heart and kidney? I mean it's, uh, it's, it's, it's yeah. difficult. It doesn't happen very often, so. There, OHSU is the only center here in Oregon that will do the dual transplants. Wow. And they do not, 
I think I was the second or third this year. So <laughs> it's not common. Um, you are, when you're needing both, both transplants, both the heart and the kidney, uh, you actually are bumped up um, on the list um, for kidney, because the kidney transplant list is extremely long, mm -hmm. extremely long, and unfortunately people are waiting two, three, five years for transplant. Mm -hmm. but, but kidneys can, you can get kidneys from living donors, correct? Correct, correct. But not heart, obviously. Yeah, and they, yeah. they yeah. wanted me to have um, organs from the same donor. Mm -hmm. So both my heart and kidney came from the same donor. Do they sometimes do it where you have different donors? If it's at different times. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, that makes sense. All right, you had some pictures that we want to show mm -hmm. um, of your family and, and uh, your life, so maybe we can take a look at sure. those now, and maybe you can explain to us what we're looking okay. at. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> this, this picture, I ended up celebrating uh, my 42nd birthday in the hospital. <laughs> and so we had a big party, <laughs> and one of my friends brought in these fake mustaches. So this is my husband, myself, <laughs> my son, being silly with our mustaches. Yeah, uh, this is Christmas this year, so this is just two yeah. months after transplant. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. And my son golfs, and my husband golfs, and this is at my son's um, end of the year golf tournament. Oh, fun. We went to Hawaii uh, last August. Wow. So. This is before. This is before, before transplant. Wow. And then this was, oh. <laughs> this is in August, and this was right before I went in, like two weeks before I went in to the hospital so, for good. For the wait, wow. And this, we called that deer uh, fuzzy. <laughs> 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 and myself, my son, and my dog Pesto. Oh, cute. <laughs> The dog that got all the love before the sun came yes. along. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. It. So, <laughs> how's, how's your family dealt with all this? Uh, it's been a rough go. Yeah. Uh, my son and I are extremely close. Yeah. So, uh, I went into the hospital two days after he started middle school. Oh, jeez. And so, that was really hard for me. Oh. I missed his entire football season, oh. which was really hard. I yeah. didn't get to see one game. Oh. Um, but he's, he's a rock. He ended up finding me the first time I passed mm. out and having to call 911. My husband wasn't home. Oh. And so he's mm. seen a lot, yeah. um, been through a lot. And my husband's been through a lot. He's been through two, the two whole family has. The whole family has. Um, they're just strong. They're extremely strong. And I, I'm going to brag on Trent for just a second. With everything that went on with me, during school, he just brought home his report card and had uh, three A pluses and four A's. Wow! So, good for him. Yeah. Good for him. Very He's proud of doing him. Doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost out of time, so Judith, I'm hoping yeah. you can tell me just a little bit more about what do people need to do to to join the registry? Because okay. obviously, this All is right. a very important right. thing. There are three ways to sign up on the registry. Most people sign up through DMV. Okay. You put a donor code That's on what your I have. On the your little license. D on my. Yeah. You on can the card. do that at age 15. You don't need anyone's permission. Okay. Um, you can sign up online, which a lot of people do now, an iPhone, an iPad, um, or online on our website, website Donate Life NW. Uh, also on a paper form, if somebody wanted a paper form, they could call us and ask for that. Okay, so it's simple, so it's easy, it's easy to sign up. It's simple to sign up, and it, what it does is it lets your family know what you would want. And, you know, and that gone, is, families you know, want to honor their loved one's yeah, wishes, and if yeah. they don't know, it's really awful. So, yeah. But if it's yeah. on your driver's license, that makes it easy. Right. right? And the so donor registry is only accessible to the recovery agencies. The hospital people can't see it at all. They don't need to. They're right. busy saving right. lives. Right. So just the recovery agencies see the, the registry when someone passes away. Okay. Thank you both. I would Thank love you. to actually talk to you much longer because there's so many more questions <laughs> yeah. I have, but I appreciate you both um, being here to talk about this, sharing your, your personal story with us, Tracy yes. and, and Judith, for the great work you're doing there. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you. And if you're interested in becoming a donor, it's so easy. Just go ahead and do it when you uh, at the DMV, mm -hmm. or you can go online to www.donatelifemw. Thanks for watching this segment of Community Hotline. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more.